I hope that you are having a great Sunday. I'm altering some odd size boxes so I can make flow journals out of these kind of odd size boxes. Um, I have a Texas toast box. I have a waffle boxes and they just don't quite fit uh, the the whole flow journal-ish kind of scheme. So what I'm doing is altering these boxes. And I wanted to show you just kind of quickly how I do that. You can see that the box would have too big of a spine. It would be too long and lanky. And I am going to alter the actual spine of this book. Uh, it does make the spine really strong and it's really simple and easy to do you know just in case you don't have like some good old pre-made boxes like um, cracker boxes and cereal boxes and things like that so we're going to uh, work with this texas toast box and we've already cut it up the side remember to reach down into your box and when you feel that double seam uh, usually on the ingredient panel that is where you want to cut so that is where I've cut this journal. We're looking for that, we're really looking for that uh, panel. And usually it is the ingredient tab on the box. So you can kind of judge where that is. We want those two things to be our flaps. We want our spine to be as flat as possible, which is why we cut on the ingredient panel of the box. This box is about three and a half inches. Um, I'm cutting this, of course, I've measured it, and I drew a line at one and three quarter inches so I can overlap the spines on the book and have a nice, um, have a really nice spine on my book. So I'm simply cutting this. I could do this with a paper cutter, but I'm in a small, you know, it's just such a small space that I work in. Uh, so I just decided to whack it with some nice scissors. Now you can see what's going to happen here. I, um, I stack one spine on top of the other. You can secure this with washi tape, I mean uh, double stick tape. You can um, use some sort of spray adhesive if you want. I am choosing good old Eileen's Tacky Glue. And I'm just putting a very generous amount on one spine of this box book that I'm making. Now, the next thing that I want to do is to pick up one spine and put it on top of the other. And you can see what happens here, y'all. Uh, basically, you're creating a smaller spine from a bigger spine. And you can do this with any kind of box that you run across. You know, if it's a square box, you can, you can alter it. Uh, I am super fortunate that my friend saves boxes for me, but sometimes she's not at home and, you know, she doesn't have boxes to give me. A lot of times she does. Uh, I use boxes, of course, from, from uh, our food pantry here at home, but it's just a really handy hint uh, about how to alter something and make it work for you. You know, I'm all about just making whatever you have work. Um, I think that I have kept my ot light off for a few minutes here. Uh, we're not going to work with the shiny. Oh, I know. I'm sorry, y'all. Sometimes you get an overlap on that spine there, uh, and you'll want to just cut that off with really a rotary cutter. Works really, really, really good. I'm very grateful to my art angel for giving me a rot rotary cutter because it has helped my hands so much just having that. I'm going to click my ot light on for you. Uh, I was trying to not work with uh, an ot light while I was working with the shiny side of the box. Okay, so now our spine is in really good order. Let that dry. Let it dry, let it dry, let it dry. I'm working with a box that I made about mm, an hour ago. Um, 
we're measuring down if you can see that top crease in your box always put the top of your box to the top and you can see that there is already a score line there you know already a crease line so butt your ruler up to that crease line and draw down at seven and a quarter uh, that will give you a super nice size box as I'm demonstrating right here and we are going to score the uh, the lines in the bottom of this box the next thing that we need to do is get rid of the excess box that is not serving us for our altered box so we're cutting off some corners we cut off the left seams we're going to start cutting the right seams and you'll see how all this ends up when uh, when I get finished cutting here basically we are just making the box work for us I'm showing you guys the rotary cutter here um, I recorded audio with this video but it did not record <laughs> so that's why things seem kind of uh, out of sync I'm very sorry about that y'all I don't exactly know why my tablet did not record my audio this morning we're gonna start clipping our cuts away from the box and once you kind of get the hang of this you will have the hang of it it's nothing earth shattering or nothing technical to it at all you're just altering the box to make it fit your needs so we're taking off the pre-made creases on the bottom of the box there we go and now we're clipping the um, you know we take the tabs off the box and you'll see me do that and then I'll also do it at the top which we can you know we can see that a whole lot better when I start doing the top of this this was rather a big box so I wanted to cut it down and make it work for me these are so nice ego car ego boxes uh, Texas toast boxes anything that is that size you know pancake boxes uh, frozen pancake boxes things like that are such a nice size and they make great soft bound books you know they're not um, they're not a hard cardstock or a hard uh, cardboard like some books um, which is it makes them very very nice I love to work with these books we're trimming our tabs off at an angle now I want to be sure that everything folds up nicely and nothing lies on the crease of the spine so I think I'm pointing that out now okay so we're we're doing our angles here and we got the bottom of the box is all done and now we'll work on the top of the box we'll cut off our tabs and we will even up our flaps on the top kind of making them um, as even as possible up there cutting off any excess cardboard box board remember sometimes when we get boxes that have those big blobs of now you can see what we have here we have our little sections uh, ready to go we're cutting off the tabs and then we will go back and do our angles this just helps the box fold a whole lot better it's a little bit hard to cut the um, to cut the spine tabs because of course you've got a double spine there so of course that's double tabs as well sorry I've got a real mess here guys I apologize now we're ready to go ahead and score the bottom of the box so it folds together nicely um, I'm gonna take out my um, I'm going to take out my paper cutter because my score my beautiful friend Judy gave me a scoreboard but it's on the other side of the room and I learned 
to score not on a scoreboard but I learned to score on my paper cutter and to me that is it's really handy to just have that and pop it in there I do love that little score tool that came with the scoreboard man that thing is awesome so I'm trying to get things kind of evened up here you know another one of those measuring things I don't like measuring I'm like Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray does not bake. Do you know why she doesn't bake? Because she does not like to measure. <laughs> I think that's so funny. My mom does too. My mom loves Rachel Ray. Watches Rachel Ray every single day. It's so sweet. It tells me all about what Rachel Ray cooks. So I'm scoring my cardboard. This is never quite easy, but... You know, you got to score it because it's too, just too hard to fold any other way. It's also kind of hard for me to see. Um, I'm standing up and I'm trying to do this because I'm trying to keep everything in frame today after our not keeping everything in frame yesterday. So there we have it. Our... Our Ego Texas Toast box is scored, so we can now fold up our flaps. And I will point you guys to the How to Make a Box Book videos. Uh, it's a series of videos that I did last year. So you can kind of see gluing techniques and uh, whether you want to use some double stick tape or double stick tape, tape and glue is what I usually use. Um, so. I really do hope that you guys will try this, alter those boxes, make them your own, and I appreciate you guys watching so much. Thank you for supporting my Etsy shop, y'all. I am just, um, I'm so grateful, so grateful indeed. Have a wonderful Sunday, y'all. I think I'm about at the end. Um... I'm going to have to start cueing myself when I do voiceovers because I'm, I'm never sure where I stop. So we'll just continue to talk about this.